Hello software engineers. This video is designed to show the three main types of finite state machine that are often employed in software engineering to make a system change between different known finite states, hence the term finite state machine. The same problem can be solved in almost infinite ways in software, and it's not always obvious why a certain solution is chosen. Is this video for you? I hope so. The video is aimed at anyone who needs to write code with a set of predetermined states or someone who just wants to understand the different ways this is often implemented and the benefits and disadvantages of each. But what is a state machine? State machines are everywhere and cover almost everything we do in software and even the real world. A washing machine runs a state machine. Fill with water, heat up, spin the clothes, add detergent, you get the idea. Each of these are states, and the controller in the washing machine decides when to go to the next state based on an event, like temperature being reached, time elapsed, or some other sensor. The three types of state machine we will be covering are the classic switch case, a table of function pointers, and my favourite, the table of structs. I will also show how to store the table of structs in flash memory rather than RAM. In the following code, I'll be using the Arduino um, IDE and an Arduino to keep things simple. Quick note, there are far better IDEs out there, even for Arduinos, like Platform.io, Eclipse, or just a good text editor in GCC, but that battle of taste is for another day. What example are we going to use? The, cla the classic traffic light example, but with a twist. This will be for a pedestrian crossing, where we have a push button that the pedestrian presses when wanting to cross the road. A red or green light for the pedestrian, and a red, amber, and green light for the road users. Although rather pedestrian, this example should be familiar to you all and easy to understand and implement. The types of state machine and how they work are important, not so much the flashing lights. So what are the states um, we are going to be using? Shown here is the state diagram of the states. The normal state is the pedestrian light is red and the road light is green. The controller waits for a button to be pressed. Um, when a pedestrian presses the button to cross, the light starts to change after a delay. The road light goes amber, and then another delay, and then red. The pedestrian light goes green, um, and then another delay, and then it starts flashing green. Then after another delay, the pedestrian light goes red, and then another delay, and the road light goes amber, then a short delay, and then we go back to the initial state of the road light being green and the pedestrian light going red. Okay, so here is the first code example, uh, but don't worry, all of this will be on GitHub as well as the state diagram that we'll be using. So at the top of the code, we define the different states, um, some constants, such as how long to wait in between each state and how many times to flash the pedestrian uh, light green. There are loads of different ways to implement this, but I'm going to use an enum to represent the different state, or specifically an enum class. What is and why, you, why use an enum class? It's basically an enum that can only have one of the predetermined values, and it has type safety, which is important for reliable and readable code. But what's an enum? An enumerated variable, enum for short, programmers don't like typing for some reason, probably to play more video games. An enum is just a number with predefined values with nice names that we can understand, or states. There is a function to set up the inputs and outputs called setup pins. In the flash LEDs file, there is a simple function to flash the LEDs, which is itself a simple state machine. The IO pins file that defines which pin we will use for each of the outputs and the button input pin. Back in the main body of code, we call setup pins from the setup routine and flash the LEDs. And then we set the LEDs to their default state. Road green, uh, the road green LED on and the pedestrian red LED on. In the main loop, all the way down here, we check that the state we check the state of the pedestrian button using digital read, 
and then we check if that state has changed. And also for a little bit of debug, we print out the time that it was changed and what the new state is. And then we call our uh, state machine function, giving it the time and the current button state. So the switch case style is what a lot of us commonly think of when creating a state machine, or often the first example you'll come across when looking for state machines. It's obvious that there are different states, or cases, just from looking at the code. It's pretty straightforward to plan and write out. Just start by writing out the different states you need, and then fill in the logic. I won't go through each state in lots of detail here. I encourage you to download the code and play with it if you're interested, but I will go through the basic operation. We have some global variables defined above the uh, run switch case function. To keep track of time, we use the last switch time to get the current time and next switch interval uh, for the delay that we want. Um, we set the state in this function, state in this variable called state, and there's also a a boolean variable here, a boolean is just a one or a zero, which states, which records if a cross has been requested. Now, in the first state, road go, that's this state here in the state diagram, we check if, or we set this cross requested to the input given to this function, b cross request, and we set it to true if the cross request is true, and if cross request is already true, nothing changes. Now, we want to have a bit of a delay so that, let's say the lights have gone through their, their pattern, if someone presses the button immediately, we don't want the states to go to, we don't want it to start going through the routine immediately. We want there to be a little bit of a delay in there so that um, traffic can move so you don't get a traffic jam and, and that sort of thing. So we only want to proceed to the next state if a cross has been requested and the current time minus the last time is greater than the interval that we wanted. And if it is, now we're servicing this cross request so we can set that to false. We set the state to the next state, which is weight road amber. We set the next interval to the weight road amber time, defined up above, and the current time uh, we record in last switch time. Then the code breaks out of this case, which just stops the code executing every other state beneath it, and then just returns back to the main loop. So in the next state, weight road amber, once the time has elapsed, we turn the green LED off and the amber LED on. We set the next um, switch interval to road amber time. We set the state to the next state, road amber, and we record the current time. And just to give you, I'll, I'll just prove that this is the code that we're actually using by uploading that to the Arduino, which you'll see here. Apologise for my terrible little diagram covering the LEDs. This is meant to be amber. I didn't have any amber, amber LEDs, so it's just red painted over a white LED, but you get the idea. So if I press the button, after a delay, we get an amber light, you can barely see. Then the road light goes red, then the pedestrian light goes green, then flashes green, and then pedestrian light goes to red again, road light goes amber, and cars start going again. And if I press the button again, there's a bit more of a delay. Now, one thing that I have done in this code is if I press the button starting from the flash LED state, let's say someone goes up to the traffic lights and they're already flashing green, so they don't want to cross the road, but they press the button. We still want to be able to service that. And as you can see here, after, a, after this five second delay, it does start progressing through the states. And just to prove, if we press it in the red LED state for the pedestrian, it'll go to green, wait around five seconds, and then it should carry on. There we go, going through the states. 
Now, what are the advantages and disadvantages of using a switch case to implement this? Well, one disadvantage is this code runs from line 50 down to line 164. So you know, 110 lines of code, it's rather big. And although this is a very simple state machine, if you imagine, for instance, the uh, example of a washing machine, things can get a lot more complicated quite quickly. Um, it's nice to be able to break this up into separate functions so they're easier to change and, and replace if you want to change the functionality, fix bugs, and also test in isolation. Now the good thing about this code is it's nice and simple to understand, to read. You can see the, okay, what happens in the road go states? Okay, we set a variable, we check a variable, right? We check a time, we do some stuff. Oh, and then we go to the next state. Okay, so what happens in this state? It's nice and easy to follow along, see what happens, and make changes, which is good. But it can be quite long. And again, this is a very simple example. So once you start getting into more complicated state machines, things can become unwieldy quite quickly. Now, the second example I'm going to show is using function pointers. Let's just drag this code in here. Set it to the right size. And while I talk, I'm just going to upload this code. Oh, there's an error fun. Helps if you set it to right serial port. And there we go. So now we should hopefully see code uploads. And if I press the button, the same states should play out. Quick note on the size of code. This uses the function pointer example uses slightly more RAM um, and more ROM. So that's one comparison straight off the bat. Now the rest of the code is all the same. The flashing LEDs, the IO pins, we still have the same traffic states uh, enum class to hold all of our different states. We have the same constants and the same setup routine. Now it might look a bit complicated here, but mostly that's just the syntax. What we have here are function uh, declarations. A declaration is saying this thing, this function, road go func, it exists somewhere, not here, but somewhere it exists. It's just so that you can use this function without having to have it defined above where you use it, because otherwise the compiler can complain at you. Now, this line is a bit horrible but basically what we're saying is we're creating a type with the type def keyword called state func and state func is a pointer to a function which returns void and takes the argument of a uint32 which is just a 32-bit unsigned integer and also a boolean the same as in our other example same uh, same type as the run switch case function. So we're rather than we're use, we're going to create a table to hold pointers to all of these functions. And a pointer, if you're unfamiliar, is just the address of something. It points in um, memory to this thing. So here we have all of our functions for each of the states. Now to save typing out void star state func blah 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 um we just want to have a nice name to use a type state func so what we're saying is we have a const expression just means that it doesn't change of type state func called state funks lowercase s and the square brackets indicate that this is an array and we populate our array with the road go func and to get the address of a function that's just the name of the function if i were to put in the code open and close round brackets like this and some arguments that would be calling a function and of course if i try and build that a we don't have enough arguments and b this is filling out a table so that won't work so we just want to put the address of each of our functions in a table now notice at the end we put null pointer that's just zero 
What that means is that we can check when we iterate through our table, if we get to a zero, something's gone horribly wrong because we shouldn't. We don't want to go past the end of this table because we'll be going off into no man's land into memory. Now, if I drag these side by side, hopefully what you should see is that the body of the road go function should be basically the same as the road go case in the switch case because they do the exact same thing likewise with the weight road amber function and the road amber funk and road red cross and so on i'd just like to point out how i do the if you press the button halfway through the state machine that's done in the road go that's done by setting the g cross requested to true um, by using or equals so it sets it to true if b cross request is true otherwise it leaves it alone the underscore g is a bit of a some programmers use that to indicate that that's a global variable and i'm a terrible programmer because i haven't done that consistently for the other variables but moving on here in the pedestrian green state if you press the button that will be stored in the cross requested global boolean and from here on out um, whenever the cross request is true that will be stored in the cross request so that's how that works so looking at this so now we have a table um, of all of the addresses of our functions okay now let's go down to our loop i'll just move this up so we can compare that to the loop of the switch case example now what you should see is it's pretty much the same the only difference is instead of calling run switch case well, we call state funks which is the table of functions, the table of function pointers. And we need to know which function in that table do we call? Well, that's the state. Now, this thing here is casting, or it's just treating the state variable, which is actually an enum class, but it's just treating it as if it was a uint8, which is just a byte, an unsigned byte. Now, enum class traf states, this inherits from a uint8. Basically, all that means is I want my traf states variable to actually be a byte under the hood. By default, it's generally an int. And on an 8-bit Arduino, that's a 16-bit variable. And we don't need 16 bits. We only need 8 bits. In fact, we could get away with less than that. But say we're using an 8-bit number to store that. So let's break it down. So we've got a number between 0 and whatever this holds. And I should point out the, the best way to, to do this is to explicitly specify that road go is equal to zero. The compiler should do this automatically, but that's not really a given. So it's best to do it verbose and specify that the road go state is equal to zero. But anyway, I digress. So we have our state, our byte, and we look in our table of state funks and so this part here basically just returns the address of whichever function is related to our current state. And then we just call that function by putting the round brackets, like calling any other function, like digital read, with the current time and the button state. Simple enough, right? That's pretty much the same as um, we had before. The, but the key difference is instead of having this massive switch case 110 lines of code or say we have simple little functions for each of the states and my brain isn't very big so i can't cope with you know big long functions i find it a bit and you may too you might find it hard to get your head around and this is just a simple traffic light example let's prove that that works it gives you nice flashing lights while i'm talking so what you should be able to take away from this is that 
this is basically exactly the same and in fact it does work exactly the same as the switch case example now the function pointer example it does use a bit more ram and rom it's nicer because we can we can just change one of these states if we want to for instance i can replace if i don't want to have this function here i can have two of this function which won't do what we want it to do but it's nice and easy to change if we want which is nice and likewise I can just change the body of this code rather than trying to find where it is in in a big switch case but it, it's half a dozen of one six of the other you know it's, it's it's up to you how you want to do it but it can help for larger um, state machines now some of the other disadvantages and advantages if now in in my functions i'm using global variables and i'm setting a, a i'm taking in i'm reading a global variable g cross requested setting it to the argument and checking it um, last switch time and next switch interval they're global uh, state that's global and of course these two are global as well and that's not very good because what it means is this function has hidden state it means it's doing things that you know, are a bit harder to debug. If I wasn't to do that, let's say this function returned the next state, and that's the way that typically this way of implementing a state machine by using a function, a table of function pointers, typically the way you'd implement this is each function would return the next state, either as the pointer to the next one, or it would just return the whatever variable you're using to hold your state be it a byte a unit 32 or an enum class whatever it is you'd return that from each of your functions and if you take in all of your inputs and maybe give it pointers to thing global things that you want to change it means you can easily test each individual function in isolation and that's very good so that's the function pointer example now, the next example I want to show you is my personal favorite, which is using a table of structs. If you're unfamiliar with structs, basically a struct is, let's find the definition of a struct. Don't need that one. Um, a struct is just a collection of data. They can be different, can be the same, doesn't really matter. So what have we got in our struct state data? Well, we've these are all constant because they're not changing. We've got the pedestrian LED. Well, what's pedestrian LED? Pedestrian LED is yet another enum class of a UN8 size, a byte. And that has these possible different values or labels or names. So the pedestrian LED can be red, it can be green, or it can be flashing green. A road LED can be red can be green or it can be amber. So these are just variables which hold the state of each of the LEDs. And we also have our old friend, the traf states enum to find up above, which is the next state. And we also have a Boolean to whether or not we want to store the cross requested. And back in our previous example, we did that in the switch case by saying we just put this line of code in if we want to store the cross request at that point we just put that in if we don't we don't put it in there same in the function pointer example so back in the struct table so we've got a boolean for b cross request now you, you don't need to have this here but in c plus plus you can put the colon and then the number of bits that you need for that specific variable it's kind of pointless here because um, if we had say eight different you know if we had multiple booleans rather than having the the underlying type of a boolean is generally a byte or on an 8-bit platform rather than using a whole byte to store one bit the compiler will be able to pack the struct and make it smaller and it'll use just the required number of bits but again it's kind of pointless here and we also have a uint32 which is the next wait time which is an integer so next wait int now the cool bit 
we store in our state data type so we create a table of state data type called state data table that was table because of these little square brackets here and const expression just means that um, you're telling the compiler that this is a constant at compile time um, you don't have to put it in ram if you don't need to this this is constant it's never changing it's a constant expression this is a c plus plus feature so for each of our states we define the color of the led for the pedestrian color of the led for the road users and what the next state is we also def um, define whether or not we want to store the cross request and how long we want to wait for the next state so you can see here that all of the information for our state machine so all of the data that's captured in our state diagram is contained in less than 10 lines of code pretty cool huh so if you want to change say i want to change this delay to two seconds you just make the change there I'll put that back to free and let's just prove that this works which is serial port hit upload So we got our nice flashing LEDs. I'll press the button. Amber. Wait four seconds. Red. Wait for the cars to stop moving. Green. Flashing green. And then red again. So that's all the data we need stored in here. Now, the flashing green LED is a bit special. We'll come to that later. Everything else in this in this code should be the same as before. We have our setup pins function. We have our setup routine. And here we have a function to set the pedestrian LED. Nice and simple. You just give it the enum, the byte, for the pedestrian LED. And we have a if, else, it, you know, if this, do this, else, if this, do this, else, if this, do this. So if the pedestrian LED is red, we know we want to turn the red LED on and the green LED off. Likewise, if it's green, we want the red LED off and the green LED on. And if it's flashing, well, then we do something a bit different. We, turn the, we know the red LED is always off and we have this flash count variable, same as before. We increment it and then we check bit one. If bit one is true, we set the output to be high. And then we increment it. So this, so this is the way it will work. The first time round, flash count zero. We check whether bit uh, bit zero, the lowest um, bit, is true. And if it is true, we set the output to true. The first time round, it's zero, so it's going to set it off. Then we increment. The next time round, the number is one, and one and one is true. So the output gets set to high. Quick note, if I were to put plus plus flash count rather than flash count plus plus, what would happen is it would increment the variable immediately and then test it. And that's not the operation we want. We want it to test it and then increment it. We have something similar for the road LED. Now for the, let's just go down to the loop. And you already see that this code is a hell of a lot shorter than the switch case. Well, I say a hell of a lot, 30 lines shorter, but what the hell. So we run our struct table function, same arguments as before. And here is our run struct table. Now, the way this works is we have at the top, we declare a state data type pointer, which is a pointer to um one item in this in this row so we get the address with the ampersand operator of the state data for that specific state so if state is road go zero that would get the address of the first one and store it here so now we have a pointer directly to the state data that we're interested in. 
Now, well, if you're unfamiliar with structs, the way we access pointers, or uh, well, the way we access members of structs if they're a pointer, is with the arrow operator. If it wasn't a pointer, if this was a state data type, not a state data pointer type, then we just use dot. But because it's a pointer, we use the arrow, that arrow. So if store request is true and cross request is true, well, then we set the global cross request to true. We have a Boolean for run the state. That means, oh, you know, do we need to do something? Which we check down here. We have a Boolean for timed out. And remember this from before, which we had copied in every function or switch case. Instead, we just have, we set a Boolean to true if the current time minus the last time is greater than our interval, nice and simple. And we have another Boolean for advance to the next state, which we set to false for now. And we also have to deal with some special cases. So if the state is road go, uh, then we want the run state to be, that's do we run the state to be the cross request and the timeout because we only want to advance if we've timed out and the cross request is true. And if that is true, well, we're servicing the cross request, so we can set that to false. And if the state is not the road go, well, we don't need to worry about that. So we only set run state to timed out because for every other state, whether or not we advance is just based on time. So if run state is true, then we set the pedestrian LED, we set the road LED, we set the next switch interval to point to our data, and the next wait interval, which is this column here. What else do we do? So we set the last switch time to the current time, and now we have to deal with the flashing LED state because that's a bit special. That's the one thing that doesn't quite fit into our, our table. So, because that's the only outlier, we deal with it here. So if the current state is equal to traffic states flash green, then what we want to do is, if the flash count is greater than or equal to the flash limit, we finished. So we can reset flash count and we advance to the next state. If we're not in the, if we're not, if flash count is not greater than the limit, well, we just want to keep on running. And advance next state will be false. So we'll just keep running this. And remember, in set pedestrian LED up here, this is where flash count gets incremented. So once flash count has reached its limit, well then we set it to zero and we advance to the next state. And if we're not in the flash green pedestrian state, then we advance based on time. And if we are advance next state, then we set the, the current state to the next state, which is defined in this column in the table. So I hope you'll see that Although it may look a little bit difficult to comprehend at for, uh, under first inspection, all of the logic for our states and our special case, which is the flashing state, because we're going to do something a bit weird there, is contained in this function. And all of the data for our functions, for our states, is contained here. Like, let's say when you first press the LED, I don't want to wait four seconds. I just want to set it straight away. So we'll upload that to our board. Press the button. And it just goes straight to um, straight to the next state. I'll set that back to four seconds so it's consistent. Now, 
let's compare let's compare this to first off let's compare it to our original example using the switch case now each of these are simpler maybe they're nice and easy to understand you know we check a timeout we do a thing change the state set some time we break out then we go to the next day and so on but it's quite long-winded and we're still store and in the switch case example we're storing everything in these constant variables <laughs> constants um well they are variables these are in ram we're storing our timeouts our flash limit and so on up here and the logic for controlling how our states work is contained in each of our switch cases whereas in the struct table example all the data that we need is contained here apart from the flash limit because that's our one special case note there are no other global constants like these ones here there are our global runtime variables here we could put those in another struct and pass that in as a pointer to that struct to our um, iterate routine <clears throat> and which is another way of doing things because that which is good because rather than using global variables which can be hard to track down and trace and debug we're limiting it now compared to our struct uh, switch case example our switch case uses 3482 bytes of rom and 228 bytes of ram whereas our struct example uses 2960 bytes of ram so we're using 500 bytes less of rom but we're using more ram quite a bit more ram actually and ram on an embedded system is often your limiting factor <clears throat> on an arduino nano the 18 mega 3 to 8p we only have 2k of ram to play with and maybe you want to do something else that's quite a lot of ram to be using for such a simple opera for some such a simple example so hopefully that should give you a brief overview of the difference between doing that to the switch case whoops it is now comparing that to our function pointer example our function pointer example uses more rom it does use less ram but it uses more ram i believe than the switch case yeah the switch case uses two to eight bytes of ram bring that in there whereas our function pointer example uses 246 so that does use more ram now you might be thinking well why not just store all this in rom like i promised earlier and that's exactly what we're going to do here go away updates so bring this up now if i compile this example which stores them in ram rom sorry you'll see not only are we using less than 3k of rom we're using 228 bytes of ram which funnily enough is the same amount of ram as used by the switch case example but the switch case uses 3482 bytes of rom so we're using 500 bytes less of rom of program space of that's basically your functions and your constants that's stored in the read only memory in the flash so how do we store it in rom basically after our definition of our table we put in this keyword which is specific to um, atmel microcontrollers but there are other ways of doing this on arms and, and other uh, microcontrollers so we put in the prog mem keyword and this says to the compiler hey compiler don't go and store this in rom and then when you boot up copy it into ram you don't need to i only need each of the one of these states at a time i don't need all of them at once i just need the data for one state and then when i increment the state i go to the next one so i only need one at a time i don't need it all in ram at the same time so how do we p pull it out of ram basically if we compare this to our struct table example over here and we go to our run struct table what we do is we create a state data called ram data and note that this is not a state data pointer this is a full fat state data 
So this is a struct in RAM, which we put on the stack because it's in a function. Um, so this is a single instance of our struct. And then we use the at mel specific memcopy underscore p. Don't know why they didn't call it memcopy underscore f, but anyhow, it copies into the destination, the destination first, which is the address of our RAM data struct. And where do we copy from? Well, first off, we need to get the current state. We look in our table, which ne um, which is in ROM, but we look in our table and we get the address in ROM, in Flash, of the current state that we want. And we take the size of the state data type. So basically what this function does is it copies from Flash into RAM this many number of bytes. So now RAM data is equal, um, is, is in RAM, so we can use it, and it holds the states that we want it holds just the data for the one line that we're interested in and then we check you know our cross request just as we did before and hopefully you will see oh, wrong window hopefully we will see that from here on out this should be exactly the same as this so everything else is the same. It's just this uses 2 to 8 bytes of RAM rather than 300. And I will just prove we upload that. Oh, there's an error. Again, helps if you set the serial port. So we'll upload that to our board. Press our button. And off we go with our states so we can cross the road. Wonderbar. So what's the difference between use, storing it in ROM and storing it in RAM? Well, we have to use special functions to peel it out of ROM. We have to put in a platform specific command to store it in ROM. But aside from that, it's exactly the same as our struct table. Logic's all the same, the operation's all the same, the functionality's all the same. We just use a lot less RAM. Right, well, I think I'll leave it um, there for now as I've waffled on for almost three quarters of an hour. Uh, leave a comment down below if you're unsure about anything and I encourage you to download the code on GitHub, link below, and have a play around. Maybe you can think of a better way to implement the exact same states, the same functionality, but using less RAM or ROM, or maybe some other kind of improvement. Thank you very much.